Welcome to another expert interview. Depending on where you're listening to this, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. If you have additional questions from today's episode, make sure to put those below. It allows us to record a second episode or hop on with guests for specific deep dives into places that you guys want to talk or learn about. And as always, we jump straight in. So Sky, tell us who you are and what you do. My name is Sky Anderson. Devin, thank you so very much for having me. I am vice president of Scarlet Books, your accounting-based software. Love it, man. So it's been a journey. And when we say accounting software, like, I, I know you're different. So I guess lay that foundation for us. Like, what, what makes Scarlet different? You know, first and foremost, our, our pricing structure. You know, we're, we're built to save you some money. Effectively, after that, when it comes to more money saved and or even time management, with one of our main claims to fame with our software is that you're able to house multiple entities under one account. So if you have... 18 different properties and you have and they're in 18 different states. Now you have 18 different LLCs. All of those are housed under one account for one cost. Love that. And that it, I think if we talk about the development of the product, I think that's something that's awesome for people is I think, you know, you and Michael, as you, as you went through the development process, it was, you know, what do we need and what's missing in the industry? And I love that you talk about that multi-use. So real estate's a good example there where you might have multiple entities or multi-locations. Maybe you have, you know, different locations for your business. Each one's probably operating under a different LLC. The, and so why, why is that important or different than what's out there? You know, a lot of it can be boiled down to time management. You know, if you have multiple LLCs, if you're trying to produce a profit and loss or a balance sheet, that's time consuming. You got to open up one set of books. You got to get the information, put it onto an Excel, close down those set of books, open up another and rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And this is massively time consuming. Uh, additionally, with us being able to house all of your different entities under one account affords us capabilities that are relatively unseen or and, and or even unheard of with our competitors. For instance, if I need to move money from my management organization down to a lower level LLC for whatever reason, pay a bill, maintain X, Y, and Z, my competitors 15 to 45 minutes long for that one transaction with mine, eight, nine, 10 seconds. That's awesome. So it really is about time savings and efficiencies. Let's talk about the why. Let's stay in the property world. So someone owns a couple of investment properties and they're just, you know, tracking the expenses in and out of a bank account and they just export that and use that as their, like, wh why should they have an accounting software for those who haven't taken the jump? So, <clears throat> A, if you're not maximizing where you're putting your monies and how those monies are being categorized in the whole nine yards, everything in this world is cause and effect. If you're going to keep, excuse my language, but if you're going to keep crappy books, that means at the beginning of the year or the end of your fiscal year going into the next tax season, well, that means you're probably going to have a pretty crappy bill from your professional keeping keeping all of your stuff in line. And now you're producing a box full of receipts and X, Y, and Z. Well, time is money. And now you're paying a professional to look at each one of your receipts. This, this is not conducive to a properly running organization. Love that. And, and I think it's important that we had that conversation because I think that you know, if we look at a small business, if we look at someone who owns a couple rental properties, like it may just be a thing where it's like the cash goes in, the cash goes out. And then you're right. It becomes this like, you know, ninth inning scramble to try to get it done. And then you're paying your CPA and bookkeeper all this extra money. So I think that's a great takeaway for everybody is, you know, if you don't have an accounting software, like why? And one of the reasons why is probably the belief that it's hard to get into. And I think that that's fair. I think that it's fair to assume that you might struggle to get into one of the big name accounting softwares just because of all the complexity. And I think, Sky, like, I think that's where you guys set yourself apart, right? Like, if, we, if I onboard with you, like, how's that process? Oh, absolutely. Our onboarding process, whether it be dedicated with, you know, one of our teams or myself, your average individual is onboarded in less than 15 minutes. But our system is put together in such a fashion to where it's meant to be used by the everyday individual that has not been classically trained in accounting and accounting procedures. So for instance, our competitors, and I'll get into one of the other ways that we stand apart, but with our competitors, you open up the software and they just say, go at it. Great. I have no idea what I'm doing. There is no roadmap to success. 
Now I have to leave the software that I am now paying for, go to YouTube and watch countless hours of sometimes garbage to never fully understand the software. Then you're going to the little top right corner where it says 1-800-CALL-ME for support, where they're effectively going to sell you a bookkeeper or an accountant. And that may not be in the cards financially for that individual. Whereas with our system, there is a video attached to every single screen. You're not going to get lost. And our entire system is predicated off of a next button. So instead of getting dropped off going, hey, I no, have no idea what we're doing here. My system says, hey, I understand you don't know what you're doing. That is OK. Let me show you the way. Love that. And I know having done some demos myself, you know, like we get into accounting software, we got to sync our bank account and then like, cool. So we sync it. And then you're like, okay, now what? And then it's like, well, what categories? I have no clue. Like I'm not an accountant. And I think one thing we have to talk about, right? The name of the company is Scarlet Books and Scarlet is important. So talk to me about that. Like what is Scarlet? What, why is that name in there? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, the creation of Scarlet and, the, and the, the mission behind it, we are very much family focused. Now, you might be curious on, OK, wh why are we going towards the family when we're talking about accounting? Well, how many times has the small business owner or the business owner in general said, hey, Tommy, I can't make it to your baseball game today because I have 10 hours worth of books to accomplish and things of that nature. So to answer the question on where Scarlet came from, my business partner, his daughter's middle name is Scarlet. And we wanted to make sure that at all times we are family focused in everything that we do. I love that. And it's the true mission, right? Like we want to protect your time. We want to streamline. We want you to focus on things that matter. Now let's talk documents because I know this is something that's critical. And so let's talk about the why. Like <laughs> what documents should I have? And I know we're talking about minutes, resolutions, things like that. But like talk to me about them. Like what, what do I need? Why do I need them? Absolutely. So when we create an entity, what we have done, and an entity is just a, a different name for an LLC or a corporation or a PLLC, whatever it might be, but ultimately it's an entity. So we need to remember the root. An entity is something that stands alone. So we've got that. So when I create an entity, what I've effectively done is I've created a person on paper. An entity has an EIN. We have a social security number. And the list goes on of the comparables. But we need to treat the organization as if it is a different individual from us. So then we incorporate minutes and resolutions. The minute is, is the thought process or the pre-authorization that you are asking your company to do something or do something on the company's behalf should it become appropriate. Opening up a bank account, spending company's monies. Even though you put your money into the company, that's great. It's not your money. It's the company's money. So are you a purchasing agent for the organization? And the list goes on. So those documents help create a distinction between myself and my organization. So if I've ever caught in a lawsuit, an audit, a bankruptcy, anything that has to deal with any of those type of criteria, when I sit down with that person of authority, the very first question out of their mouth is going to be, can I see your corporate minute book? Now, for the individuals that are listening, if you don't have a corporate minute book, please go and get one. You can get one for 70, 80 bucks. Just type in corporate minute book and go and grab yourself one. There's all kinds of information inside of there that is absolutely required. But those documents create that distinction between you and your company. So if you are sued, your company is going to take the hit, not you. Because if they can prove that you're running your company as an alter ego of yourself, then that means that the company never existed at all. So now whatever judgment is going to happen that day is going to happen against you, the business owner, and not the business itself. And I think going back to that property example, that's a great example where it's like, well, we may own the real estate. And then there's a lot of risk if we continue to just own it as an individual. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and we live in a wonderful, wonderful time and people are freaking amazing and they're wonderful and the whole nine yards. But at the same time, it doesn't take too long for that same individual that was absolutely wonderful to trip, fall, hurt themselves. And now they're not wonderful anymore. They kind of go a little ruthless and it doesn't matter. They're going to go after them. You look at the statistics on how many lawsuits are levied every single day and every single moment of every single day. You don't want to be caught in that line of fire, especially if you own the property personally. That means the individual that hurt themselves is now suing you personally. Love that. And so I think that that's the thing that's interesting if we think about it from a business owning perspective or owning multiple you know, properties or things is really thinking about one, we need to know our numbers. I know it's something as a consultant, I talk to people about all the time, right? Like what's your PL? Like, let's look at your numbers. 
But I think the part that's really cool about what you guys are doing is keeping people accountable to like, great, but let's also make sure that those actions you're taking are properly documented. A hundred percent. And that's one of the things that we're very proud of, of our software for is that, yes, you're maintaining your numbers. You're maintaining your numbers for multiple organizations from one dashboard, which means one cost, uh, which is all great. We're offering minutes and resolutions. Now your corporate compliance or your corporate veil is being maintained. That's wonderful. But some of the secret sauce with our software is that when you create that resolution, which there are trigger points just for the individuals that they don't they don't know what resolutions need to be created. And that's OK. We're actually identifying those resolutions from the transactions that are happening inside of your accounting world. But we took it a step further. When you create that resolution, our system will generate specific tasks associated to that resolution. So, for instance, I purchase a piece of property. I create the resolution for it. I'm already in the 90% now because most individuals are not doing these things. But when I create their resolution, the software is going to set documents inside your corporate minute book, add the acquisition documents to the corporate minute book, acquire the appropriate insurances, and the list goes on to point the business owner in the correct fashion of how to do things so they know their company is being run rock solid. That's so awesome. So talk to me about accounting. I know that is the world you guys play in and, you know, profit is one of the pillars that I talk to businesses about a lot, right? Like why, why a PL? What other numbers should they be paying attention to? I mean, I, I guess let's just get to basics. Like as a business owner, what should I be paying attention to? Well, you got to pay attention to that bottom line. I mean, all day long. And how are you doing that as a business owner and, or it may be your spouse. You need to know where your money is at and what your money is doing at all times. If I run a retail store and or maybe even a coaching business and my bottom barrel buy-in is being purchased, but I'm not selling my upper echelon, why is that? And how am, what, am I tracking it? What do I need to finesse or tweak to be able to make this, this option more appealing? We need to be able to track these things. Where am I putting my money? Where's this? Where's that? What is your area of focus? Okay, you're in real estate. Are you going to be purchasing all of those properties yourself or in time? Do you want the company to be purchasing these things? Well, you need to have a profit and loss statement. You need to have a balance sheet. Where is your company's credit score? You can have Your company can have its own credit. Why are you trying to use yours? When you're running these things, I mean, we need to know where our monies are at so we can then do more. That's the whole point behind it. Well, and I love that you use the example of marketing, right? I think that... Often business owners make emotional decisions around money, which is interesting. And I know from a consulting standpoint, we'll talk about like simple things like how much revenue did you do last year? I'll start big. Most people can give me a gross number, right? Like they can give you a ballpark for an annual number. Yep. But then when you start getting into your point to net, then it's like, well, I'm not really sure. Well, like, well, what'd you pay to yourself? What's left in the bank account? What's your cushion in the bank? Like there's, I have so many more questions yeah. about, about the business. And without knowing those things, it's hard to understand. Should we hire somebody? Should we get rid of a marketing expense? Should we add a marketing expense? Should we expand our building? Should we not expand our building? Should like, like we need to know these things. And then what I found really important, you know, it's different when you have a super streamlined business, but for your rentals, if you own a dozen, is looking at, well, is one of these having costs starting to increase because of age or deterioration? And are we seeing more maintenance things and all this other stuff? So I just, I love that you bring that up because I think as a business owner or a professional, someone who might be thinking about getting investing, this is why we want you to have good numbers from day one is because it will let you make really smart decisions yeah. down the road. Yeah. Emotional decisions are what they are and they're, I apologize to anybody that's listening, but making a decision from an emotional standpoint is probably one of the worst things that you can do because there is nothing behind it. There's nothing to stand on other than, well, I felt this way that one day. Okay, well, did you get into it with the spouse? Are you having a hard time with your child? Or is this or that? My car broke down. And now we're flying off the, off the handle doing this decision, which could have repercussions six months down the line because of XYZ that day. That's, that's a, an awful place to be. Well, it's so true. And I think that, again, there's a lot of ways to manage numbers, right? And the, exporting your bank account and looking at it may make sense if you've got like a few transactions. But I think that <laughs> at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that could get missed there. Like, do you have a credit card that you need to allocate costs to and all these other things? And so I love it, man. I love what you guys are doing. 
What do you see big mistakes for business owners? Like if you're working with a business owner, like where do you see them fall on their face when it comes to their numbers or accounting? You know, a lot of the times from what we have seen, and it's by no fault of the individual, it's just a, it's an unfortunate place that we live in, in some respects, that accounting and accounting procedures are not something that is like, but what about my accounting and those procedures around that? Trying to categorize your transactions. If you have an LLC or a corporation, you need to be taking advantage of the entire tax code. You know, no more of this idea of, oh, well, you know, the the rich and the this and the that. You are now in the same bucket if you're making $150 a year or if you're making $1.5 million a year or and or a month. You need to be taking advantage of every inch of the tax code. So to do that, you need to have these things in place and know where you are and see, I mean, when you go to sit down with your professional and they ask, how much did you spend on marketing and how much did you spend on repairs and maintenance and how much this and how much that and how much fuel did it take to get to X, Y, and Z? These are numbers that need to be fulfilled on or you're not taking advantage of. And now are you paying money to the government? Well, <laughs> don't do that. You know, this is, this is why the rich and the powerful say, hey, you know, I use the same tax code that you do, and I make $50 million a year, and I pay $3 in taxes because they're using the tax code. The government gave us the playbook. Use the government as an associate, not an enemy. Well, I think that's that Q4 conversation, right? Like, as a business owner, do you have, you talked about systems and process for accounting. Do you have a, a daily, a weekly, a monthly, a quarterly, an annual process around when you look at your numbers, when you make decisions, what numbers you're looking at, what metrics, all those things. But as you get towards the end of the, the year, if you're looking at your bank account and there's a big number in there positive, you got to sit there and go like, man, is my net really high? And then have that conversation with your accounting specialist, right? And go, well, should I bonus myself? And what's that do? Should I buy equipment? Should I buy real estate? Should I keep the money as a cash reserve and pay the taxes on it? Like, you got to know. And what happens is you stumble into next year and then look back and go, oh, man, I have a huge tax bill instead of being strategic. Yeah, absolutely correct. You know, why would you want to pay 30 grand to the government? Because you did you did very well and had an excellent year when you could have taken that $30,000 and put it somewhere else to where maybe it was non-taxable and or it did X, Y, and Z. This is why I'm a very, very big pusher of having a team around you. There's nothing better that you can do on the face of the planet other than having a team. When you speak with us, with your small business owners, most of the friends and family of that individual are like, they're nuts. I have no idea what they're doing and why they do it. Why don't they just go get a job? Well, I don't want to do that, A. But if I have a different team that supports me and tells me what I'm doing wrong and what I'm doing right, especially when it comes to your financials, now you're getting your ship pointed in a specific direction. That's so awesome. So talk to me about the development side. I think if we like take the hat off to the platform and just look at like, hey, you built a SaaS business. What are some lessons you guys learned building a SaaS business? Oh my goodness, what a loaded question. Some of the things that we have learned from running a SaaS Make sure that all of your data is collected. Collect it all. Many of us, and even even coming through the ranks with my business partner and I, you know, we made some. You know, it is what it is. We made some mistakes along the way. I would be surprised on even the guys, even your Elon Musk of the world. They definitely found out aggressively on which ways on to not do things, uh, and we're no different. So make sure that you have all of your data before you jump and make a decision, because that can cost you a lot of freaking money. A lot of freaking money. Well, then let's talk about platforms, right? I know that that's something that interesting, especially in today's world. There's a lot of ways to build the foundation of a software. Like, I know, like, is that something you guys struggled with? Is choosing like, well, which one do we use today to get a launch? Which one do we use long term? Do we make the jump? Like, how, how did you go about that process? For us, we this. We found we found ways that we could work outside of the norm. A lot of individuals will come up with an idea on a napkin and then they look to get financing and then they go to a big box store and they just have it built. If that's what you're going to do, that's that's fantastic. We went a little different of a direction, uh, but it's always evolving. Always. I mean, we look at we look at multiple directions at any one given time, which one is most advantageous. Love that. And you're listening to your audience. I know because I've been around the company for a few years as you guys are developing and scaling and growing and selling is, you know, listening and going like, okay, cool. 
you know, we want to add this feature stack or that feature stack or this integration or that integration. And I think that's what's cool about working with a smaller business. If someone's thinking about like a, a software solution for their business, whether it's streamlining, optimizing, you know, anything in that world, when you can get to the decision makers, you might be able to build something that is highly custom to you long term because you're early, right? Whereas like, good luck going to the big guy and typing in, I want this, like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to get an email back saying, thank you for the, the information. And that's where it's going to end. We follow a pretty simple prerogative when it comes to Scarlet Books. Take care of the client and the client will take care of you. It's the most simplistic business nature um, on the planet. And as long as you're listening to what your people are asking for, it's going to set you up with for success. It really is. That. And I know you guys are doing that all the time because I've seen some of the pivots and things you're doing. And yeah, it's awesome to see. Awesome. Well, let's talk about, I, I, there's two questions I love to ask. So talk to me about a book that you recommend or a book that's been meaningful to you. Oh, Three Feet from Gold, all day long. Three Feet from Gold. The whole premise behind the book, if your listeners are not familiar with it, an individual had a had a gold mine and dug and dug and dug and dug and dug and dug some more just to find absolutely nothing. There's a travesty. Somebody else came in and purchased that same mine. They dug three feet more and they ran into one of the largest gold veins in the United States. Three feet from gold, man. I mean, pull on the bootstraps, put the jacket back on and do it one more time. I mean, what else are you going to do? Going back to having a job. And if you're an entrepreneur, you are not built to listen to somebody else telling you what to do all day long. That's just not in your nature. So, you know, tie up the straps, get it done one more time, keep on trucking, one foot in front of the other. Rome wasn't built in a day. I mean, all of these things are real. We take them for granted, but they're they're absolutely real. And when things get super freaking hard, that just means that you're closer, closer than you've ever been to that success mark is when it gets the hardest. So keep on trucking. What, what else are you going to do? I love that. And that's, that is my, uh, it's on the top three list of book recommendations I give. I usually buy most clients that. <laughs> For those of you who have read Thinking Grow Rich, it's the new version of that. It's a lot easier to read. The language is more modern and this, it's more interview storytelling style. And so it's easy to digest. Thinking Grow Rich can be a little bit heavy and hard to get through. I mean, phenomenal content, don't get me wrong. But if you want an easier read, but it's still super high impact and has really good lessons, I agree. Three Feet from Gold is is a book that anyone in business should read. And if you're struggling, it's a great time to read it because it just gives you that reminder. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. So talk to me about a lesson you've learned. So this is your own journey. So if you look back at your younger self, what's something you would tell the younger you? Holy moly, get into this world quicker. Read, read, read the books harder. I mean, don't take the time for granted that someday I'm going to Someday I'm going to be a, an adult and I'm going to be wealthy and I'm going to be this because someday it's going to happen. I can guarantee, guarantee you someday will never happen ever. I mean, you, you got to get up and say, I'm going to go and do it today. If I could talk to my 21 year old self or 20 year old self, I would have slapped me in the face and said, read, read lawsuits, taxes, asset protection. That's an, that's an astounding read right there. <laughs> If you want to have a nighttime book, that's the one. But it's, I mean, it's filled with all kinds of information to, to be able to run your organization confidently. That's, I would slap that young guy in the face and say, read this book, this book, this book, and and go to work. It's amazing that the, it's such a common answer with any professional, almost at any age, is I would have started sooner. And so if you're listening to this and you're debating making a jump, a pivot, a change, permission granted like like the the you 10 years from now is going to appreciate that you did it and that you did it now not a year from now absolutely i mean look build your credit score get one piece of property put a renter inside of that property make sure the renter is covering the mortgage if you're lucky enough i mean there's one individual and i, I know that he got the information from another and i'm going to completely rip it off but there's one individual that will look at any growing city that's growing exponentially. He'll buy a piece of property of a pretty significant size, eight miles outside of dead center, and he will wait for life to come to him. And while he's doing that, he's selling the rights of the property to the farmers. He's not paying a penny at all. 
And then eventually the city grows and grows and grows. And he says, yeah, Best Buy or Walmart or whatever have you. Do you want this property? Because now it's prime location. I'm going to sell this thing, you know, for millions upon millions of dollars when they bought it 15 years ago for $150,000. I mean, this is the kind of forward thinking that we need to be doing in our everyday lives. I mean, <laughs> I love it, man. So how can people learn more about Scarlet Books? What's the way they can can learn about the company? You know, they can always find me at, a, at an email, sky at scarletbooks.com. That's with two T's. You can reference our website, scarletbooks.com, once again, with two T's. There's various different ways. You can reach directly out to me from the website. Love that. Awesome. Well, go check the website out. See if it's a fit for you. If you have questions about your numbers, I know Sky can talk to you about accounting backwards and forwards, left and right. It is an important topic and it's one that we probably don't spend enough time on as business owners. And so make sure you spend just a little bit of time. If you're thinking about making the jump between platforms, again, have the conversation and see if it's a fit. If it is, they'll let you know. If it's not, they'll let you know. I will tell you that they are very honest and transparent and they want clients that are going to stay. So give them a look. Reach out to Sky. Sky, I appreciate the time, man. I appreciate you sharing your journey and talking to us about your platform. Hey, Devin, I appreciate you having me on. I'm set back a little bit. I'm, I'm a little, little emotional over here. So I appreciate you and I appreciate your time, everything that you do.